Welcome everybody to the uh, 10th sprint demo for Hydra in a Box. Today we've got three demos for you. We're going to be showing off the bulk importer tool that we've been writing. And we'll also show how our um, how the universal viewer can use our IIIF implementation. And then we'll do a walkthrough of the system architecture that we're using in Amazon Web Services. So first up is going to be Justin Coyne showing off the importer and the IIIF universal viewer. Okay, so here's, so here's, so here's, so here's, so here's, here's our repository. Um, you can see that we have, when we do a search, we're not getting any results in here because this repository is completely empty. And what we can do is run this script called import from CSV. We've created the CSV file by taking our mods file and running them through a transformation to a CSV. We think that CSV is a low barrier of entry format for people to get their objects into Hydra in a box. So we think it's an important thing to tackle. So I'm just going to start this script up. It takes a few moments to load up the full Rails environment. And then it will get to processing the CSVs. And okay, so we've imported our 19 records. Now we come back here and we do a search again. We see that we have 19 records in the in the database. They all have titles, descriptions, subjects, contributors, dates created, the resource types. Um, presently, we haven't imported the the objects yet, and we haven't imported visibility, but we intend to work on that next. Another thing we want to demo is. If you've seen the past demos, we've been working with some IIIF integration, and you've seen that we have the capability of viewing an image through our IIIF image server. And the other thing we can do is create a manifest by going to manifest.json. Now, um, if you take that link to that JSON, we can integrate it with other services such as universalviewer.io. I'm just pasting the link in here and opening it up. hitting our API and pulling down our image of the rhinoceros. And now we can go ahead and, and zoom into it, pan around um, all the fun IIIF uh, things. Okay, thank you, Justin, great. Sorry about a little bit of the audio feedback there. Um, so next up, Aaron Fahey is going to talk about the system architecture that we are using on Amazon Web Services. Take it away, Aaron. Okay. So um, the Hydra in a Box architecture um, is just like any other Hydra architecture. It requires a pretty deep stack. Um, so as we've translated that stack to AWS, a quick diagram of some of the AWS tools that we've uh, employed in this stack. Um, first of all, you notice that we have a section between, uh, we have two subnets, a public and a private subnet. So all of the resources I'll be talking about other than the load balancer that serves the, the application itself is uh, protected in a private non-routable subnet. So the Hydra in a Box application itself uh, consists of EC2 instances that have the application running and is uh, scalable through uh, Amazon's auto scaling group feature. So it can scale to the amount of load that it's experiencing at the time. Um, that is all served up by something called Elastic Beanstalk which is a, a, a deploy environment for web applications that bundles in the auto scaling group and load balancing tools. And when that piece spins up, uh, we use Amazon's Route 53 DNS service to make a reliable um, uh, DNS entry for the load balancer um, 
that uh, is predictable for each stack that we spend up. Um, underneath the, the web application is, of course, uh, Fedora, which is also served up by Elastic Beanstalk. And um, given a DNS entry, that's a predictable location to the stack. Um, and currently, right now, is wired up with auto scaling, but it is um, just a one of one sort of group, scaling group, because something that is uh, a work in progress is tying up um, the ability for Fedora to deposit objects into the um, S3 um, file store service from Amazon. So that part is a work in progress. Then uh, the dependency on solar is satisfied by Amazon's uh, container service, which is a Docker-based service or can be a Docker-based service. And uh, currently we use that container service for both our solar instances as well as our Zookeeper instances in order to create the solar cloud. Um, and we use the load balancer for those services as well. Um, straight out of the box, AWS services is uh, using something called ElastiCache in Redis mode to provide a, a Redis, Redis service to the application, as well as a uh, the relational database service that AWS makes available that's in Postgres mode. Um, Postgres is configured to be highly available. Uh, so that's a benefit we get straight from AWS services. Then something we worked on this week is uh, creating the background jobs uh, worker profile within uh, the Elastic Beanstalk service as well. And that is also uh, auto-scaled, but I believe right now it's tied to just one uh, as we work out some of the shared storage concerns as well. And that is, uh, that's functional because of another out-of-the-box uh, AWS service called the Simple Queue service which allows the um, Hydra in a Box application to deposit jobs on a queue that then the, the uh, worker instances know to pick up and um, create jobs through and, and, and accomplish jobs. So um, that's about it. Okay. Thank you, Aaron. And thank you all for watching these demos. So this is the 10th week in a planned 10 week work cycle. That doesn't mean Hydra in the box is finished. Uh, we have a lot more work to do. So keep an eye out for opportunities to um, watch demos and participate in community sprints coming up this summer and fall. And thanks to all you folks in the Hydra community who have helped us get to where we are right now. And stay tuned. Thank you all.